Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. In today's episode we're going to take a little look at that Hater 56 Pro, uh, one I started last week. It's all up and running as it should do, the drive all now works, it starts and stops exactly as it should do. I'm going to order the spring for the carburetor, that's one thing I need to do. But I was looking at the, um, the deck on it the other day and the paint has started flaking in areas uh, where the aluminium has oxidised and the paint and the paint has lifted. Um, so it looks a bit patchy. I'm not very happy with it and it won't, it won't return a very good penny if it's like that. So rather than just sort of patching it up and just tarting it up here and there, I decided I'm going to take the engine off and uh, completely grind the deck right back to bare aluminium and then paint it over two or three coats of Amorite and then uh, it should look uh, relatively new or newer or better condition than what it did when it first came in. That way you'll get a good return back um, for, for minimal cost but uh, for a little bit of work. It's going to take me about three or four hours solid work to get this machine up and running exactly as I want it to make it look, look good as well. So there's a bit of labour of love to be done but that's free as far as I'm concerned. And then uh, when it sells this year or next year, it should make a pretty little penny. If this is the first time I'm watching Mixed Mowers, hit your subscribe button and whack your bell, set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told that one done a video or turn on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's get on with this Hater 56 Pro. Okay, so here's the Hater 56 Pro already. I say I have made a start. Um, lots of paint was just lifting. See where it's darker? That's where the paint had actually lifted and the, the paint was still there, but it wasn't being held onto anything. Just here, it's exactly the same. And it's gone pretty much all the way around the machine. And also on the back, I can see it's lifting just there as well. So that'll all come off. Um, but rather than just um, knocking that back and then filling it and then um, adding the paint to it, I decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the engine off um, I should probably leave the roller on, that won't be no biggie. Just disconnect the engine, take the belt off, lift the engine out of place, and then that way I can then grind all the way around. And uh, just so it blends in quite well. This has got quite a nice key to it now, it's quite nice and rough, but however, that will probably show where I've been hit with a flappy disc. Uh, that'll probably show on the paint work, so that'll have to be um, sanded back by hand or, or by electric sander just to take that key back out again. Uh, but that, that's no biggie. And then we can put a, uh, a couple of coats of um, hammerite on there. Uh, to sort of bring it back to a, the, the nice sort of British racing green, so to speak, and then um, put the sticker on it and it should be good to go. So let me get the engine off. I'll show you how to do that uh, for those of you that are not quite familiar, and then um, we can get on cracking with the paint job. Right, so the first thing we need to do is uh, I'll take this belt off, and then there's two little tiny 10mm bolts, one here and one here. That must come off, because that will then allow you to take the shaft um, off with the engine rather than... Uh, taking the actual shaft pin off. So you, what you can do is literally just take this whole pulley assembly off. So first thing to do is to remove this, remove this, um, this blade, uh, this belt, sorry. And simply done just by lifting it up, get it past that little tiny tensioner, and then bring it back over, attack it from all angles, just like so. Tease it on over off the pulley. Bear in mind this is a brand new belt. So just go a little bit easy with it. You don't want to be stretching it to the max. Lift it off there, and then what you can do with the pull cord assembly uh, with the uh, um, HTD disconnected, I'm losing my words today. What you can then do with taking that this way is you can just very, very gently pull this cord, and that will then allow you, if you watch the pulley, to take the belt off. But only do that with the, with the HTD disconnected, okay? Once that um, belt is removed from that pulley just there. Doesn't have to be all the way, just put off, off the top. We can then get our Dewalt with a 10 mil on it. And we can then disconnect. With those bolts now removed, you can now remove the, uh, the pin guide, which comes off as well. And we can now spin this machine over or around. Uh, we have got oil in the machine, which I'm gonna be draining out. And also I'll be taking the pets out. This machine's got to be serviced as of yet. So take the oil out and drain the petrol out and then we can tip this machine up on its side and then we can take this engine off the bottom and it should come off with the, with the side pulley as well. Everything comes off together, no problem. Okay, so with the machine now up on its, um, up on its side of the oil and the petrol now removed, the blade actually looks quite good. It wants a, wants a, bit, of a, a bit of a grind, but don't in too bad condition. Got to remove this one bolt here off of the um, friction plate and got one bolt here, one bolt here, and then just be one round this other side, I think. Yeah, one on this other side. And then we can then remove uh, this engine from 
uh, from this machine. Now, the biggest problem we're going to have is getting this friction plate off. That's going to be the biggest problem. It may just fall off like butter. I don't think it will. But uh, we shall see, right? Should be about a 14 mil. That's a 13. Let's grab a 14 mil. That's a 14 mil. That's a bit of a, a, bit of a persuasion on there with my best friend. 14 mil. The 10 back. I'm going to just try and impact that off. Lovely. They don't often come off like that. So, belt comes off. Oh, sorry, belt. Keep saying belt. Blade comes off. There's a friction plate. Now, I'm hoping that's going to come off. If it don't, we're going to have a bit of a problem. But so, let me just punch this 14 back off the socket, and I'll be back in two ticks. Okay, that's now a socket's been punched out. I've got that back. Um, let's have a look at this um, boss. Now, um, these can be absolute swines to get off, okay? And I haven't even attempted this yet. What you can do is um, put a, a puller on here. Um, you can get specially made, specially made pullers, purpose for this, or you can put a, a big bolt in here and jaw pull it off. Uh, I've even seen people use blades um, where they cut a bit off the blade like so, and then jaw two holes, put a bolt through here, bolt through here, um, and then put the centre bolt through, and then your, your pulling device comes off of this. So that, that's a way of doing it as well. Uh, learned that from Luke over at Mowers and Blowers. But I have seen, I give a few little times just a tap as I took the um, bits and pieces off. This is actually moving this one. So I'm not going too much of it, just, just tapping. And it is coming. There it goes. There's a keyway inside there to be had. The keyway looks like it's had a, it's in better days. In fact, yeah, that keyway has been, been mullered before, look. That's, had a, that's a bit of a uh, triangle side, that shape, and fully square that side, so that's, that's not quite right. Um, and the reason that's come off is like someone's put some form of copper slip on there. So thank you. So put the keyway to one side, and your friction disc as well, all to one side. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to come off that easy, um, but hey-ho, it did. Little space to here, um, but, but that can stay on. And now we want some, they're probably 14 mils on here. Look at like a 14, yeah. And all we're now gonna do is very gently try and shock these off. That's not gonna happen. So break out the breaker bar. Sorry about that, add a top conker on your blower. So as I was saying, I now use a breaker bar for lots of these stuff because sometimes I've had a couple shear off, so I've just um, gently loosened these up, but a nice good breaker bar um, does, does the job just as well. So I need to disconnect the, um, the throttle linkage and the dead man, all that sort of good stuff up the top of the, top of the mower. So let me get this engine loosened off, and then hopefully the engine will just lift off once I've uh, done the bolts. There's a few spaces here to take off as well. Uh, nothing uh, that you guys and girls can't already do. Nice big bolts, and then it's got a spacer, as I say, just there. So make sure you keep all the bits together and put them in a tray so that uh, you've got them all nice nice and tidy. Otherwise, you'll be looking for parts later on. Um, I'm not quite sure what this, uh, all this big assembly is on here because it, it doesn't actually need it. But I'll have a look later on. So I can't get away without fitting it with it. But uh, I dare say, because of the bolts, the spacers, someone might have been in here previously because there's, there's a little um, cable attachment here which doesn't get used, so I think it's been modified ever so slightly, so. Right, let me get this bits off, like I'm back in two ticks. Right, engine now unbolted. I'm gonna cut this here, because this cord needs to be changed anyway. Cut that there, because it's got a little tiny um, metal bit there which we can keep. Uh, that's all off. All I need to now to do is disconnect the, uh, the throttle off of this machine. There's a 14 mil in there and I want a 10 mil to go back on. Now I have got the little tiny spring, eight mil, a little tiny spring that goes onto the carburetor to make sure that the machine fully chokes. Uh, I've got one off of a donor engine outside. I'll show you that in two ticks because that was what, was what was missing on this machine to allow it to fully choke as per. I'll show you that in just two ticks. Put that onto there. Uh, where's my little spring gone? I'll lose it. There it is. There's a little spring um, 
needed to fully choke this machine, so I've got that to go back on. So I keep that to one side. Right, throttle can now come off. I may be replacing this um, this cable yet. We shall see. But anyway, so now engine's unbolted, unbolted here. One of the bolts did shear off. I need to tidy that up. But now, with a little bit of love, this should, I say should, lift off relatively easily. It's just caught up on this last bit of a bolt. There it goes, and that one. I get to it, there it goes. And then the whole lot will lift off in one go, including the shaft. So don't lose no bits there, because I want to grease that up later on to make sure that um, it's doing its job. Uh, so you can see all here, the paint's pretty good here, but look there, see that? It's all going to come off. And that's the reason why I take the engine off, because I need to clean this all up to make sure I get all the, all the paint off whatever. So let me get it all now grinded back, and uh, that'll be two minutes for you guys, but it'll be about two and a half hours for me. Let me get it all sorted out, I'll come back once it's all done. Right, so we're definitely getting there now. Uh, I've got a bit of, bit of a little niggly bits just to do where I can't get the disc in. Uh, I do it by hand, um, but I'm going to give it some treatment. Um, I might take the back flap off yet, and uh, these front wheels may have just have to come off just so I can get in here. There's a few little spots I can't quite get to. Um, and then a general tidy up, and then I can then start to do the um, the first lot of uh, primer. I'm going to put some uh, just some normal primer onto here. Uh, not that's going to rust, it's just going to be a bit of a better key for the, um, the Amrite to stick to. Um, and it will also hide any imperfections as well. So uh, that'll all be good. So let me get the, I might take the handles off actually, take the handles off and then take the front wheels off and then just try and sand these bits back by hand just so I can't get a disc into. And then uh, I can start to be, uh, start to do a paint job. Okay, so it's been about two or three days since um, I last started this project. Um, I've been busy indoors the house, but uh, the deck is now painted. Uh, all done, put the sticker on as well, and it all looks quite good. It's a bit of a rub down in places, but it is only a rough little rough little mower, uh, very, very dusty. Uh, but the paint is now completely solid, which is good. Um, just now I've got to fit the engine on, and I've got to do a, I've got to put the back flap on, that sort of good stuff, um, sharpen the blade, all that sort of good stuff as well. So let me get the engine back on. Uh, don't forget I've got to do a pull cord yet, and I've got to uh, tidy all the, the plastics up, spray the exhaust up, all that sort of good stuff as well. So let me get it all done. Let me get at least the engine back on where it needs to be. That way I sort of uh, I know where I'm going and what direction. And then I'll come back to you in two ticks when it's done. Okay, so engine's now on. It was an absolute pig to put on. Because uh, it's got, that, it's got that, that, that disc thing underneath it. Not, not a friction plate, it's like a collar. I don't think it's a standard. Some bits of this is missing. Um, so what I'm going to do now is take these covers off. Um, put a blanket over here and take the valve cover off. And I want to spray and clean up all these areas, spray all these exhaust guards up nice and black and silver so it all looks tidy, um, so it matches the appearance. Put some Reviver on these covers just to bring them up. I might black them yet, I'm not quite sure. They are a little bit faded, but we'll see how we get on. A bit of a general tidy up and uh, put a new pull cord on too because the pull cord has, has had it. Uh, that, that was due to, uh, to, to pretty much snap. So new pull cord, all that sort of good stuff. Once that's done, I'll come back to you. Right, so I've took the valve cover off. The valves are fine, I've just checked them. Um, that's being sprayed up. Exhaust is being sprayed up, that's hanging in the background. The exhaust will be black and the guard will be silver. Um, I've got to do the, um, the top cover yet. The pull cord's now done. So I just wait in fact to dry it. Once it's dry, I'll put it all back together and show you. I've had a good degrease and what have you. I've blown it all off. The deck is absolutely filthy at the moment, but it will come back once I've cleaned it all off. So looking pretty good. Um, quite impressed with it so far. I've got a new air filter to put on. It's sort of got had a new spark plug already, despite the fact it looks dirty. But uh, yeah, we're getting there. It's starting to come together now. Okay, so um, as you can see, the valve cover has now been painted. So is the exhaust guard and the exhaust and the top shroud. All looks nice. Done the top cover. I've got to put a new air filter on. That's no good. Um, new pull cord has been done. And I've just put the back flap on now. It's no biggie. I can get around and do that. Um, I'm just going to Amrite paint, Amrite paint that. I've got no black gloss left, which is a bit of a shame, but there you go. So I've got to do that. And then um, I've got to do the handles. And then I might do something with these tyres too, these front tyres with no treads. I might try and do something with those. But uh, what I need to do, once I've done the, the paint the back flap on, 
I'm going to put the, put the handles back on and then I've got that little spring to fit on here to allow the carburetor to choke because it wasn't choking fully. So I've got a spring for that and I'll show you how to do that very, very shortly. Okay, so brand new air filter there, um, that's to go on. Now, if you remember, when I um, last looked at this, this, um, this throttle would not, uh, would not choke properly. And it's because it was actually missing, uh, missing a spring. Now, what I'm gonna do is hopefully I've got the right one. Let's take this off. And I've managed to find a, um, an air breather pipe that actually fits as well, because the, the air breather pipe didn't fit, had a big, big kink in it. Um, <coughs> so it wasn't the right one either. Now, this little spring here, here it is, I got it. There's a little spring. It's just got a little tiny hook on the end of it and a little tiny eyelet on the other side. Now what happens is, hopefully you can see this, right down here, there's a little tiny flap and that is what enables your machine to choke, okay? Right on the end of here is a little tiny groove cut in and this little tiny hook will actually sit right on the end of there and it goes onto this little tiny eyelet on, the, on underneath. Let me get that on first, just about there. And then this little tiny spring, literally just a bit of jiggly pokery clips onto there. Now when you uh, operate your lever, um, this is actually fully choked now, it's actually pulling it over. But when you go over the other side, it'll fully pull it over the other side. And all of a sudden it gets to a certain point and no return. And then it goes, bump, gump. See how it clicks there? Um, and that's the spring it was missing. So now that this machine will actually now, when I ask it to, will actually now fully choke. Because it goes to this part here, that's, a, that's about, um, neutral and when you ask for choke if I just touch it bomb it clicks right over and that bit of tension there allows for that spring uh, to choke the flap fully so that little tiny spring is what was missing um, quite common to be missing uh, they do just fall off these get a bit worn and they just fall off but uh, that's where it goes and now we've got the correct amount of tension onto this um, throttle so now what I can do is um, clean this air box up uh, put the air filter on connect the, the, um, the throttle cable up, and now that machine will now fully choke, of course, with a new air filter and what have you. So let me get that done, and I'll be back in two ticks once I've done it. Right, friction disc is now put back on, and also I've put some copper slip on there. I've also done the blade, nice and shiny, 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 um, front and back as well, all been doled off on the back as it should be. Um, so it's got a nice little step there, good edge, not sharp. All I've got to now do is just put the, uh, the blade boss um, screw bolt, uh, on and then uh, just make sure you locate it on the actual um, bolt itself, okay? Once it's located on the bolt, it's then central. Once you've got it up to a certain degree and it's centralized, you can then get your impact and then uh, just wind that home. Which is gonna be about there. If I can now get the socket off. Hang on, it's happening here, belt's upside down, uh, blade's upside down. See, we all make mistakes. That was me. Spot the first mistake. I was wondering who'd be the first to spot that. Right, put it back on again. There you go, that's better. We want a lawnmower, not a rotovator. Okay, so um, carburetor is all now fully done. I've um, connected the drive cable up and the throttle cable up. That's all now done. Just got me oil. Um, got new oil going in here. Got about 500 mil just to begin with. I like to use these, uh, these oil fillers because um, they seal quite well. You can, so you can pretty much just pour 500 mil straight in without the fear of it um, coming back up and slopping everywhere. So 500 mil going straight in. And then I'll, uh, I'll let that sit for five, 10 minutes and then um, come back to it just to double check it once that's done. Um, but I think we're pretty much there, all part from, I've got to do a repair to the grass box, no biggie. And then I want to look at these wheels, but it doesn't affect me actually just running the machine up. Um, I might come back to it just to show you how I'm going to put some new tread into those. Because uh, you can buy the wheels for it, no, 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 no problem. But, uh, you know, that's more expense. So far, this machine has cost me what it cost me. But um, I actually haven't really paid a lot into the machine. The, the paint I already had, I don't really charge, don't really add that to the charge because um, the paint I've used for this has done about four or five other mowers already, so it doesn't really count. Back flaps all now been painted as well, that looks good. I might have to paint the handles as of yet. Got to loosen these off as well, they're all seized. Uh, so I've got to put some mold grips on them because if I do go to sell it, uh, nothing worse than someone come to buy it and you can't fold a machine up and put it into their car and that stops the sale. So 
make sure it collapses. Height adjustment all works as it should do. Uh, the driver is engaging, but I may have to um, do a fine adjustment a bit later on. Blade's been sharpened and balanced. New um, air filter, new spark plug. All sprayed up looking nice. It looks a million dollars compared to where it was a little while ago. So hopefully, um, once it all has been, been checked and double checked, I'll take it outside, I'll meet you out there, give it a bit of a run up and see what it runs like. Okay, so here is the H56. I've got to tighten the wheels up. I haven't done the wheels yet. I've got to just tighten them up. A touch a bit sloppy, but they don't stop me from starting it up. Um, height adjustment up to the full extension. As I say, these things will actually cut the grass to a shockingly low level. Um, when I first got it in and tried to get it fired up, it was on the lowest setting. It was like a road evader. Um, I've got to tidy the box up yet, give it a bit of a, a polish up, but the rest of it's all now done. Um, I think it's got petrol in it, I'm not quite sure. Let me double check. I didn't check that. No, no petrol. Got to the petrol out. We're getting some fuel. Right, got some petrol. We tend to run better when we put petrol in, you know, Mick. I know. I just talk to myself. Right, let's uh, fill that up. Or we'll put some in anyway. And then we'll check for petrol leaks and what have you. I shouldn't get any petrol leaks because I uh, didn't have beforehand. It's not been fired up for about four or five days. Because I say, I've been waiting on bits and pieces for it and doing other, other jobs, so. No petrol leak as of yet. Just let that petrol run down to the carby. All is fine, all had 500 mil, absolutely bang on the mark. The drive at the moment is telling me it's engaged, but we have yet to see uh, if it drives. Um, it's had a new belt as well. So yeah, we're, it's looking pretty good. Got to do the handles, got to do the bag as I say, but apart from that, we should be good to go. So let's go for a fire up, put it on the choke and uh, see if it doesn't run. If it runs, we're quids in and uh, it itself is some serious money. So onto choke, which is there, and then uh, let's give it a pull, see what happens. Nothing. Nothing yet. There she goes. choking. Bring it back off. There's your full revs. That's your lower end revs. And it stops. Absolutely fantastic. Will it restart? As I said, it's only just been fired up, so it, it may want a, a bit more choke. So, there you go. Super, super happy. This lawn mower didn't cost a lot at all. And I haven't put any more into it. Super happy. Okay, so that's the Hater 56 Pro now all up and done and sorted. Uh, looks far much better than what it did when it first came. I know the green is not quite the right colour, but uh, it, it's what I had in the shop and it's, it's, what, it's what's cheap and what's best. They don't really do a much darker one than that in the uh, Hammerite version. It's had a full service, blade sharp and, and balanced. It's had a new spark plug, new air filter. It's had an oil change. It's had a new pull cord. It's had the new drive belt done. It's had a drive sorted and checked and uh, all that sort of good stuff. Complete strip down, paint job and tidy up. And now it's up and running and good as gold. Got to do the front wheels on it, which I'll show you a bit later on. And also got to repair the grass bag, which is no biggie. But once that's all done, this may be up for sale very, very soon. It may sell this year, it may sell next, but it should fetch a very pretty penny indeed. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button or whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told at one done a video or two on my satellite weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you did enjoy. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take her easy.